What's up everyone and welcome back to Movie Race. Months after the electrifying chemistry of Nicholas Galitzine and Taylor Zakhar Perez set screens ablaze in red, white, and royal blue, the LGBTQIA community is still buzzing with excitement. Fans have been eagerly anticipating a sequel to the beloved rom-com, and while there's no official confirmation, the whispers are growing louder. How's it going? Great! Don't lie. It's a disaster. Nora, not even Meryl Streep could pretend to like Henry. Okay, Alex. Will we witness more of Alex and Henry's love story? In the bonus chapter of the collection's edition of Red, White, and Royal Blue, it spills that Alex and Henry are doing amazingly well and gearing up for a private wedding. Exciting stuff. Alex is diving into a law degree and Henry is still rocking his philanthropic pursuits, even stepping down from the British line of succession in advance. Considering there's a bonus chapter and the author McQuiston mentioned having more stories set in the same world, a sequel to the novel isn't out of the realm of possibility. McQuiston even expressed in an interview that they have plenty of stories in mind and would love to explore them one day. Lopez, when asked about a sequel, shared that even the folks in the hair and makeup department pitched ideas, ranging from Red, White, and Royal Wedding to Red, White, and Royal Baby. He humorously remarked, can we just get through today first, please? Lopez shared with Teen Vogue that he's open to doing a sequel if we have the right story. He emphasized the importance of having a compelling narrative reason rather than just a desire to make a sequel for its own sake. According to him, a sequel should be driven by a meaningful story. In another chat with Hello, he mentioned that the film could come to fruition even without a sequel to the original book. Lopez expressed his willingness to work on it if there was demand, stating, Even if Casey never wrote a book, I would if there was demand for it. And if Casey and Taylor and Nick want to work on it, then who am I to say no? It sounds like the possibility of a sequel is definitely on the table, while the key factor being the potential for a great story and the interest of the original team. The excitement among fans doesn't just stem from Lopez's comments. McQuiston also stirred up a lot of anticipation after the film's release. In a thread post, they dropped some previously unknown details about the novel, hinting at a potential future on-screen storyline. It all started with a fan asking, do you think Henry proposed or Alex? McQuiston's response added fuel to the speculation. Cannot answer this one just in case it ends up being a spoiler one day. This suggests that there's more to Alex and Henry's story, and the details of their wedding might be revealed whether on screen or on the page. In addition to these hints, McQuiston shared some interesting tidbits about Alex, like Freddie Mercury being his favorite bicon, his love for Taylor Swift's album Speak Now, and being a lifelong fan of The Killers due to a formative crush on lead singer Brandon Flowers. The author spilled some delightful details about Henry's gay awakening, revealing that it was none other than British actor Colin Firth, specifically Colin Firth as Mr. Darcy in the 1995 television adaptation of Pride and Prejudice. And here's a fun tidbit. Alex and Henry would jump at the chance to be guest judges on RuPaul's Drag Race if asked, and they each have their favorite winners, Bob the Drag Queen for Alex and Sasha Velour for Henry. Now, with all these fantastic details in mind, fans are making some bold requests for the sequel. They insist that the story must include Alex serenading Henry with Enchanted and both characters serving as judges on the Drag Race panel. These aren't just hopeful wishes, they're demands and fans are making it clear that these demands must be met. Now, the big question is, will Taylor Zakhar Perez and Nicholas Galitzine return? As of now, there's no official confirmation, but the expectation is high for Taylor Zakhar Perez and Nicholas Galitzine to return. The success of Red, White, and Royal Blue is strongly linked to the electric chemistry between Zakhar Perez and Galitzine, a point emphasized in their popular GQ interview. Considering this, a sequel without these key actors would likely be met with considerable disappointment and outrage from fans. Their dynamic performance played a significant role in the film's acclaim, so it would make sense to have them back for any potential sequel. 
However, until there's an official announcement, fans will have to wait and see if their hopes are realized. Director Matthew Lopez expressed openness to a sequel in an interview with Gay Times, stating that he would consider returning if the film is successful and there is a demand for more. The film has indeed been a massive success for Prime Video, ranking as its number one film upon release and the third most successful rom-com of all time on the streaming platform. But one thing is for sure, movies can happen without a sequel book as the first movie created new things and omitted a lot from the book. If you don't believe me here, I've meticulously observed and compiled a list of significant distinctions between the original book and its cinematic adaptation. While the film undoubtedly offers a delightful experience, it's universally acknowledged that no book-to-movie transition can fully satisfy every fan's expectations. Consequently, a few noteworthy modifications have been implemented in bringing Red, White, and Royal Blue to the big screen. The most noticeable change centers around the absence of Alex's sister, marking a departure from the familial dynamic depicted in the book. This alteration sets the stage for a different narrative experience. The exclusion of June, a character from the original storyline, carries repercussions for Pez's role within the overall story arc. The adjustment resonates in how characters interact and the events that unfold. B's character assumes a notably reduced role in the movie, with her addiction issues entirely omitted from the adaptation. This change influences the dynamics among characters and the overall thematic focus of the film. The method of Alex and Henry exchanging contact information differs between the book and the movie. In the book, Alex provides Henry with his number, while in the film, Henry finds it, altering the initial connection between the characters. A delightful aspect from the book involving Alex and Henry frequently concluding their emails with quotes from renowned queer figures is absent from the film. This nuance adds depth to the characters' communication in the book. The symbolic turkey incident, representing a breakthrough in Alex and Henry's relationship, is portrayed more extensively in the book than in the movie. The differing lengths of this scene contribute to the overall pacing and emotional impact. The cinematic adaptation omits the Wimbledon excursion, including a clandestine encounter altering the progression of events from the original storyline. This change reshapes the characters' experiences and relationships. Alex's gesture of gifting Henry his necklace in the book is replaced by a different dynamic in the movie. He takes Henry's signet ring and incorporates it into the necklace, creating a distinct visual element in their relationship. Musical choices also vary, with a song played by Alex and v and Day transitioning from Your Song by Elton John in the book to Can't Help Falling in Love by Elvis Presley in the film. This change adds a unique auditory dimension to key scenes. The climactic scene where Alex flies to London to win Henry back is portrayed with heightened drama and intensity in the book compared to its cinematic counterpart. The differences in presentation contribute to the emotional impact of this pivotal moment. The revelation of Alex and Henry's emails takes a different turn, with opposition leaking them in the book as opposed to a scorned journalist in the movie. This alteration adds complexity to the challenges the characters face. Noteworthy changes occur in the portrayal of Henry's familial support, with his mother taking a more active role in advocating for him at the conclusion. This influence contributes to the Queen's decision to allow Henry to be with Alex, shaping the resolution of the story. Finally, a notable deviation occurs in the setting, as in the book, Alex and Henry don't venture out onto the balcony. This scene's absence in the movie may leave viewers yearning for its inclusion, highlighting the impact of setting on the overall experience. Have we missed any nuances? We welcome your thoughts and reflections on the alterations made in the cinematic rendition of Red, White, and Royal Blue. Feel free to share your insights in the comments below.